Trying to get a job as a software developer is hard enough at the moment. But what if you don't have a computer science degree or any relevant experience? How on earth are you supposed to stand out from all the other candidates and prove that you have the skills needed to do the job? As I'm sure you're aware, blindly following tutorials isn't the best way to learn how to code. You need to build your own projects. But when it comes to getting hired, creating another to-do list app, tic-tac-toe or snake clone isn't going to help you. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what recruiters and hiring managers are actually looking for so you can actually get a job. So a lot of the tutorials on YouTube will show you how to create games because it's a fun way to learn how to code. But if you want to be a professional software developer, then your project needs to show off your skills. Recruiters need to know what you're capable of. And on top of that, they need proof that it's actually your own work. I came across this great project the other day from another developer that showcases exactly what you should be doing in your projects if you want to stand out. Juraj created an Uber simulator that runs in the browser. Now you can see straight away that this is quite an advanced project. And in fact, it took him 300 hours to finish it. This isn't a simple application that you can build over a weekend. And in fact, that's one of the things that makes it stand out. The fact that we can see this project in action and can play around with it brings me on to my first point. You need to deploy your projects. Unless it is a desktop application, it's no good having your project only running on your computer. You need something that someone non-technical can see and appreciate. Tech recruiters know what skills they're looking for in their candidates, but they're not developers. They're not going to look through your GitHub repos and be impressed by all the code you've written. After all, they're not going to understand what it means. Now, you might not think this matters, but if you can't impress the recruiter, then your application isn't going to get passed on to the hiring manager. And it's the hiring manager who is probably a developer, or at least used to be, who will understand your code and be impressed by it. There are often hundreds of applicants for a job, and unless you have something you can quickly show off to someone else, your project is just going to get ignored. Deploying your project to the cloud doesn't need to be expensive. AWS has a very generous free tier, and there's also other places like DigitalOcean, Versil, Railway, and Heroku, where you can host your application for the price of a cup of coffee a month, if not for free. So you now have your project running up in the cloud and you have all your code up on GitHub. Job done, right? Well, not quite. Just having your code up and running doesn't prove that you actually made it. And it doesn't tell those hiring you anything about your thought processes. When hiring developers, it isn't just about your skills or your winning personality. They want to know how you think and how you solve problems. Juraj has done this by writing 35 blog posts while he was building the project. And he's written about why he picked certain technologies, how he designed the map and everything in between. You can see in these posts why he's made certain decisions such as picking Docker, switching the application to React and which database he used. If you haven't started your project yet, then a great way to do this is to keep a daily journal. So each day you can write about what you built and which decisions you've made and which technologies you've used and why. Even just writing a single blog post at the end of the project is a great way to prove that it's your own work and it's not someone else's code that you've put online. When you're building out your projects, you should do the same things you do on an actual job. And one of those things that developers generally don't do very well is writing documentation. So once you've built your application, put together some decent documentation for it. This might include things such as system diagrams, user journeys, as well as API specs. There should be enough information there for another developer to be able to pick up and understand how your project is built. If you do manage to get past the first few stages of a job interview, then the chances are you'll be given a technical exercise to do, such as building an API. Again, don't forget to spend some time writing some documentation for your project. It used to infuriate me when reviewing a candidate's technical exercise, when they didn't include any documentation. They didn't tell me how to run their code or what API key to use. It doesn't leave a very good first impression if the reviewer has to spend ages on your code to get it to run and has to hunt through your code to find what API key to use. Your documentation should be just as important as your code and even more so if you're trying to show off what you've built. Once your project is up and running online, you need to treat it like a production application. If it was a real production application, you wouldn't just put it online and forget about it. You would put in monitoring and logging, a CI-CD pipeline, and you'd make sure everything is secure. In this project, Juraj has described how he set up Prometheus and Grafana, and he's even made that dashboard public as part of his project. It is this attention to detail that will make your project stand out from everyone else's. This might all seem a bit daunting at first, but once you have these things set up, you can use them again for all your different projects. For a CI CD pipeline, I would personally just use GitHub Actions. If your repository is public, it's also completely free. Even for private repositories, you get 2000 minutes a month, which personally for my own projects, I've never got anywhere near. 
Of course, coming up with ideas for projects can seem a bit daunting, but if you're just doing it for experience or to show off on your resume, then creating clones of popular applications is a good way to start. You're not coming up with the idea from scratch, but you still have to pick the appropriate technologies and write about your thought processes. And like Duraj did in this application, you might have to simulate some of the user interaction. It's not very exciting for the user to look at an application and it just to be completely blank. If you're creating a Twitter clone, for example, it wouldn't be very good if you're the only one that was tweeting. If you're looking to be a full stack engineer, then you need to create a project that's going to show off all your different skills. Even if you're a back end engineer, you need to create some sort of front end. Remember, it's going to be non-technical recruiters who are going to look at your application first, so it needs to be something there for them to see. So ideally, your project should have a front end, an API, a database, some documentation about how it works, and a blog post that lists out everything that you've done. And on top of that, if you want some extra credit, it would be great if you can show off some logging and monitoring as well. If you can do all of that, then your project will really stand out when you come to apply for a new job. If you're struggling to know what to learn to be able to do all of the things that I've just said, then check out my backend developer roadmap that will guide you in what you need to learn. Thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.